Bismillah. He is the benevolent, the giving and merciful. He so indescribable. His love is irreversible. Word undeniable. Lyrically untriable. Ultimately viable. Eternally suppliable. Maybe inconceivable, but beautifully believable. The true reality. There's no similarity. Gave us more than charity, peace and prosperity. Why did we never care to see it? We could keep its clarity. The Almighty, the Father, metaphorically, but in the history they tried to make his word a mystery. Gave a mortality, anthropomorphic fallacy. Say he's got a seed, they can never bring the proof to me And honestly, the greatest, the best beyond time and space Beyond matter and flesh, yes, he's uncomparable Yet his parables, infinitely list of pictures Couldn't give us the description, the pictures missing But he created all the living in every dimension And he inspired what I'm giving, the giver of wisdom Devoid of any needs, anything that he want All he has to say is be, cause he's the untouchable Infinitely trustable, his plan unstoppable, power unstoppable Untoppable, the reliable, undeniable, greater than the physical, master of the mystical, the master of the worlds, the fashioner of seas, the crafter of the universe, the atoms to the bees. He is love, he is truth, he is light, he is one, he is king almighty. All credit, all glory, all praise. Assalamu alaikum. And Ramadan Mubarak. Ramadan Kareem. Let us open up in prayer. A'udhu billahi min shaitanir rajeem. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Say, I seek refuge in Allah against the accursed Satan. In the name of Allah, the beneficent, the merciful. All praise is due to Allah, the Lord of the worlds, the beneficent, the merciful, master of the day of judgment in which we now live. Thee alone do we serve, and thee alone do we beseech for help. Guide us on the right path, the path you bestowed your favors upon, and not the path you brought your wrath down upon, nor those who've gone astray after hearing thy teachings. Amen. Amen. Praises be to Allah. Welcome to season three, <laughs> episode two, two of the 991 Attributes of Allah in 30 Days where we take three to four attributes per day and go into their meaning and their usage in our environment. This year's theme is living by the book, attributes in action. Allah says in the Holy Quran, Allah, there is no God except he, to him are the most beautiful names. And believers, these beautiful names are the 99 attributes of Allah. And the 99 characteristics of Allah, God, reflect the noblest of qualities and abilities. They represent the perfect ideal for human beings to inspire to. Islamic tradition says, derive your manners from the attributes of Allah. Therefore, our beloved prophet, peace and blessing of Allah be upon him, reported to have said, cultivate within yourselves the attributes of Allah. And our minister, whom we heard this morning, powerful, the Honorable Minister Lord Farrakhan tweeted, when you have an attribute of, of God, you should strive for degrees of excellence in that attribute. Praise be to Allah. So as we talked about this year's theme, living by the book, attributes in action. So this year, we want to make it practical. We want to make these attributes of Allah practical, but we want it also reflect the master, the messenger, and the minister when we put these act attributes into action. So. Yes, and that's, that's beautiful because as Brother Abdul Halim said yesterday, is that Allah always sends a messenger with a message. That's right. So it's not literally talking about a book. What is what is talking to us is about a human being upon which the word of God is in. So when you look at Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her, the wife of Muhammad, she said, Can I look a whole Quran? Because they asked her, what was the character of Muhammad? Right? And it's often translated, he was the Quran walking. Mm -hmm. But actually her words are saying that his constitution is the Quran. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the words Brother Abdul Halim is going to have today, khalaq. <laughs> right? So I just thought I'd just drop that in there. Look at that smile. <laughs> he can't wait. He can't wait. He, can't he, like, he like, man, hurry him get through this intro. <laughs> <laughs> but praise be to Allah. Go right ahead, my sister. So who came for us? 
we have a video for you from the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, a time and what must be done. And he talks about that one who came for us. As we have been sharing with you in these broadcasts of the time and what must be done, the representation of the great Mahdi, or long looked for guide of the Muslim world, Master Farad Muhammad, who is the master of the wheel, and the great Jesus, the Christ. The Christ and the Mahdi are one and the same. For Christ means one anointed with power to crush the wicked. And the Mahdi is one also anointed to set justice in the earth and to set down every tyrant. And we are saying that in our humble judgment, he, the Mahdi, the Christ, is so magnificent. There has never been a manifestation of God like him. And when the Quran says in the 112th surah or chapter, and there is none like him, never has there been one like him who is the master of that great mother plane or wheel. He is the manifestation of all of the 99 attributes of Allah plus a few more. As Allah is always coupling his attributes in this manner. He's mighty, but he's wise. He's strong and powerful, but he's the forgiving and the merciful. He is the avenger and the destroyer, but his power is always balanced with his oft returning to mercy and his forgiveness. He's always balanced. We would have to do something so terrible that would allow him to unleash the fullness of the power that he has. Praises be to Allah. And brothers and sisters, this is why the words from the Honorable Minister Louis Farquhar is why we wanted to have this theme, Living by the Book Attributes uh, in Action. So we want to play this video in ev at every one of our episodes, inshallah, because we wanted to really to drive home about making these attributes in ourselves practical. That's right. And so we want to encourage you up front to get your book, your Ramadan, Ramadan 2024 journal um, from our dear brother, uh, brother Demetri, minister, brother Demetri Muhammad. Um, and we'll give you the information, but to journal every day, how can you make these attributes practical? How can we put it into action? How can we put our faith into action? And so um, someone asked a question just now, how can you get the notes or how can you get the replay? All you have to do is go on yesterday's um, MOS 45 replay or go to our 99 the one and watch the replay. But it's important. How can we make this practical? We don't want to be too high science um, with making these attributes, but we want to bring them down so that you can be that book as well. Yeah, All yeah. right. I mean, I mean, so and as you see, sitting to our left, our special, special guest uh, for today, uh, our beloved student regional minister, brother, Dr. Abdul Halim uh, Muhammad, who is a great helper, a great friend uh, to myself, to Sister D, and really to the believers. Right. You know, one thing about our beloved brother is he has such a beautiful, beautiful spirit and he loves the believers. He loves the believers. And that's that's what's beautiful. You know, the mark of a believer because he loves the believer because he strives to be that himself. And I have to say that, you know, use that word beautiful. And I say that about this man, Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan said, 
One is beautiful when they are striving in the way of Allah. And from day one, that's all I've seen him do is strive and sacrifice his patience and always a smile on his face, even when he may be going through something. So I, I just want to say I love you, brother minister, and we're excited <laughs> for what we're about to hear today. Me too. All mm -hmm. praise due to Allah. So, assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. And Ramadan Mubarak. And Ramadan Ramadan Kareem. In the name of Allah, who appeared to us in the person of Master Fahd Muhammad, to whom praise is due forever. Forever thank you for coming, raising up in our midst, our divine leader, teacher, and God, the exalted Christ, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. And we thank them both for not leaving us alone, believing in our midst, our brother, servant, and friend, the Messiah, the Jesus, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. And once again, I greet you. Assalamu alaikum and Ramadan Mubarak. Wa alaikum salam and Ramadan Kareem. First and foremost, let me thank Almighty God Allah, who appeared to us in the person of the Master Prophet Muhammad al Mahdi, for allowing us to come together in this day and time. His visit to America set everything in motion to where we're sitting at this table. That's right. And it's by his permission and by the work of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad in laying this divine foundation and the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan for building again the superstructure of the nation of Islam and rooting us deeper into the foundation mm -hmm. so that we may survive. Listening to the minister this morning really uh, has affected me and in, in I I pray in a positive way, mm. but I, I keep ringing in my ear or hearing in my head, you know, how do we react or respond to a, a, a beast in human form, mm -hmm. you know, and the suffering of our people in, uh, in the Gaza and the Sudan mm. and, and the Congo and all around the, all around the world. And uh, just, just briefly before I get into uh, our attributes, my grandchildren, they're at the house because it's spring break mm -hmm. and they were eating as I was leaving and there was a, and they dropped something on, on the floor and I saw it on the floor. I said, they picked that up and one was teasing the other one said, Hey, you want this? I said, Hey, stop that because they are hungry people mm -hmm. in Gaza and in Africa. And I began to explain to them that there were, there were children who were being killed because of war and that uh, they had nothing to eat, nothing to drink. They didn't have a hospital. Uh, they lost their parents. They lost their brothers, their sisters. Mm -hmm. And they, and you could see them sober up like that. And I told them, you know, I love you, but you need to be conscious that we are blessed in everything that we have. So all praise is due to Allah. I'm thankful to Allah for being here. And uh, should I start on my first attribute? Yes, yes. Okay. So the first attribute, of course, is El Halim. El Halim. <laughs> El Halim. Which has uh, been described as, as forbearing, but is also the most serene, the most kind and gentle, the calm abiding. And since we're talking about, you know, attributes in action, we want to look at the book and attributes in action. Because of what the minister said this morning, and I know we're living in a world that's contrary that's right. to what, what Allah is going to bring in, as the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad teaches us, old world going out, new world coming mm -hmm. in, and this world is going to go out with a, a great noise and uh, with grinding and gnashing uh, of teeth, as the scripture says. So I thought attribution action for us would be if we personalize it, because when you look at the names or the epaulets, uh, efflets uh, of the, the Holy Quran. So, for instance, um, uh, El Bayan, that that gives what that that gives no, that which uh, explains all things, right? That which so the, these are human concepts. These are, these are not concepts that, that somehow you got to reach up in space to pull them out. These are these are the, some of the names of the Quran which gives us an idea of its own humanity in its divinity. So we look at El Halim, uh, El Halim, brothers and sisters, and when we think about the most serene, the most kind, the most gentle, the calm, the abiding, and we look at the opposite. So I went and I looked at an antonyms. I looked at opposites. What, what is the opposite? So if we're going to have these attributes in action and we're going to carry them out in, 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 in the fashion that the, the prophet, peace be upon him, and the honorable minister Louis Farrakhan told him to carry them out, wherever we find something that's clamor clamorous, 
there's a lot of noise going on, a whole lot of drama, right? Mm -hmm. We got to bring serenity to it. We have to call on Al Halim to bring about that sereneness. And when we find something that is cruel or callous, mm -hmm. like what's going on over in the Gaza, mm -hmm. huh? saying they won't respect, they won't respect uh, the uh, Ramadan. He's going to invade, and then they're blocking the believers from uh, El Aqsa Mosque in Jerusalem from going and making the president of Ramadan. They, they are, they are, they're playing with fire. So you find it that they're cruel and callous. But Allah, El Halim, is most kind and gentle. So wherever we find something that's cruel and callous, we must then be most kind and most gentle. We must impose that mm -hmm. attribute in mm -hmm. that situation. Mm -hmm. And when mm -hmm. we find something that is chaotic and fleeting, then we should look at the calm, the, the calm abiding. It, it just it lasts. It's a calm that lasts. It's a calm that is like uh, my, my uncle used to take me fishing on a lake. And whenever he'd have a real stressful day, he would say, let's come on, Bobby. My name was Robert. Let's go fishing. And we would go fishing and we would just sit there and there would be a calm lake and you just see the sun going down. You know, mm. like Frankie Beverly said, a golden time of day, the, <laughs> the sun goes down, it's going down, and it just was just a very calming place to be. And we want that kind of calm. So when we find something that's chaotic, we find something that's fleeting, what we need to bring about using the attribute of El Halim or calling on the attribute of El Halim is to bring a calm that's abiding. The Holy Quran says this in, in the pilgrimage 22 and 58, Instead of just snatching a verse, I wanted to kind of give a context to it. 2258 and 2259, where you find forbearing in it. It says that those who flee in Allah's way and, and, and then they are slain or die, Allah will certainly grant them a goodly sustenance. And surely Allah is the best of providers. Then in that the 59th verse, it says, he will certainly cause them to enter a place which they are pleased with, and surely Allah is knowing forbearing. So the, we have this combination, as the minister says, of the attributes of now knowing and being forbearing. And this is, when you think about someone being slain or dying, that's a very rough situation, but yet Allah promises them, you know, that they will be pleased. And he is forbearing. And then I think about the people when we, when we, after we teach and we ask, who invited you out? And a brother will just say, I just came. So the people are coming. Allah is sending mm -hmm. the people. Mm -hmm. But what condition will they be in when they get here? Mm -hmm. So we must be patient. We must be kind. We must be gentle with them as right. they come, not knowing what they suffered in their condition. So I, I'll move on. The Honorable, in, uh, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan says here, Quoting the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, he said, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad taught us from the book of Revelation, count the number of the beast, it's in the beast, right? For it is the number of a man, 603 score and six. He taught us that this verse had deep scientific meaning having to do with the creation of this world and its end. After 6,000 years of rule of the wicked, Allah God is going to come and interfere with their rule. The last six, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, represents 60 years of grace, not to mm -hmm. exceed 70 years, to give America time to repent and black man, the black man time to reform, close quote. So that is forbearing. He has a right to wipe this whole civilization out since it's contrary to his will, his mind, and his very attributes. Mm -hmm. But yet Allah is being forbearing, giving America time to repent. And at the same time, time for the black man to be reformed. Mm -hmm. All right. I mm -hmm. move on to the next yes, attribute. Mm -hmm. I do it like that, huh? Okay. al Khalik, the creator, the planner. So when we look at the attributes in action, right? What is the difference? What is the difference between someone who's doing create is a creator, is a destroyer and a wrecker? Mm -hmm. And this is what we see. We see the destruction and the, and the wreckage going on, not only in terms of, of physical cities and countries, but we're also seeing the destruction of human beings, their minds, their sanity, their peace of mind. These things are something that we have to, when we see this going on, we have to call on al-Khalid. 
because we need to create a whole atmosphere and environment that helps them to be renewed. As the scripture mm -hmm. says, behold, he makes all things new and the form of things pass away. We have to be that because this destroyer, this wrecker, by Allah's permission, mm -hmm. because what we have is what you call creative destruction. And from the ashes of that destruction comes something new. The planner. Sometimes you'll be planning and there's always somebody that's an abolisher. No matter what you're planning, they're trying, they're cut, trying to undercut you. Or they're a copycat. Mm. They'll listen to your plans and they'll go out and run, run, run ahead of you and try to do what you're doing. And it doesn't have the same effect because it doesn't have the same motivation. Mm. And so we've got to call on al Khalik to create a whole new environment, a whole new world, a whole new mindset. Because the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan said, you can't have a new world without a new man. You can't have a new man unless you have a new woman and a new man and a new mm -hmm. way of thinking. Mm -hmm. Going to the Quran very quickly, I'm going to go to the 24th verse of the 59th surah. It says, he Allah, the creator. He is Allah, the creator, the maker, the fashioner. His are the most beautiful names. Whatever is in the heavens and the earth declares his glory, and he is the mighty the wise. And then the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan says in self-denial for, for God leads to purification. He says, quote, if the spirit of God is not involved, mm. then you will not be able to transform the lives of people. And if you do God's work like the master did it, somebody is going to malign you. Somebody is going to speak evil of you. Somebody is going to plot on you. Somebody is going to promote rebellion in the church, well, in this case, in the mosque or in the nation or in the world, and it's, and and uh, against you. Somebody will always be busy doing something, but you have to got you. Excuse me, but you have got to stay steady on the course, and that is that attribute, Al Khali. And then we have Al Ghafur, Al Ghafar, Al Ghafa, and there's there is Ghafir and there's a Ghafur. And, and, and they, they, they come from the same root word, but they have just little slight connotation. But this, this, this attribute is the all forgiving, the absolver, the veiler of sins and faults, the most protecting one. Man, in this day and time, don't we all need that? Yes, sir. So, so when you think about the all forgiving, forgiving, I'm let, I'm let it go. I'm gonna, let, I'm, I'm let you make it, right? I'm gonna let you make it. But you know, somebody that's opposite, that they're always withholding. They're mm. always holding on to something that has been done or something that they, they've seen you do. And the veiler of sins and faults, you know, that's somebody, you know, he, he, he the absolver, excuse me, it, it, he absolves you. I'm, I'm go, this, I, I absolve you of that. But someone always wants to confine you to that mistake or that error, that, that sin that you made, that offense that you made. And then he's the veil of sins and faults. But then there are those who always want to uncover. They like they like uh, J. Edgar Hoover or the Hoover vacuum cleaner. They always they always try to vacuum up your dirt. Mm -hmm. And then the most protecting one. Well, you know there are those who are always always attacking. So we need Al Ghafur, Al Ghafar, to to be our protector. So when we see people withholding, when we see confiners, we see a covers, we see attackers, then we call on this attribute, the all forgiving, the absolver, the, the veil of sins and faults, the most protecting one. And the Holy Quran says in Surah 40, the believer, beneficent God, the revelation of this book is from Allah, the mighty, the knowing, forgiver of sin and acceptor of repentance, severe to punish, Lord of bounty, there's no God but he, to him, is the eventual coming. Mr. Farrakhan said again, and seek refuge in Allah, the Lord of the dawn. He said, quote, why should I or you seek refuge in Allah God? It is because he is the beneficent. He is the merciful. He is the most merciful of those who have mercy. He is the all forgiving and the only one who has the power to remove from us the consequences of our actions. Surely. There is no God but Allah, and on him let the believers rely. And so we move on to this very last attribute, and Brother Aleem is going to help me. Wudur Jalali Wal Ikram. Pretty good? Allahu Akbar. 
All right. So when we look at Jalal, that means majesty, glory, and ikram, means generosity and bounty. So what are the opposites of this? When we run into coarseness, when something that's majestic, something that's glorious, like the Honorable Elijah Muhammad has uh, majestic sisters dressed up like, but when you seen them walk in and all that white at Savior's Day, man, that was like, ooh, that was majestic. They're just beautiful. The nation of Islam, just a beautiful nation that enjoins good and forbids evil. It's very majestic. But you're going to run into coarseness and crudeness. And so we call on these attributes, Jalal and Ikram. We call on these attributes because Dhu, 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 not Dhu, but Dhu, is, it, it actually means of. It, it, they say Lord of. Lord of. It's Lord of majesty. Lord of generosity. Lord of. But as Brother Alain points out, it's like, you know, the Lord ain't in there. It's just, it's just how they translate it. But coarseness, crudeness. And then when we think about shame and lowliness, when you think about glory, right? When you find shame and you find loneliness, when you find a man sitting on the curb, when you find a sister who's been broken by this world, you got to lift her up because she's feeling shame. She's feeling lonely. The homeless man, the homeless man, the man that's unemployed, that doesn't have a way to take care of his family. We have to inject in him the majesty and glory of Almighty Allah. And then he's generosity and bounty. Allah is not selfish. We go up this morning, we got it. You know, you can think of beneficence and mercy, but he's not selfish. And he's not mean. He's a beautiful, wonderful God. Kind, gentle God. And, uh, you know, when you think about bounty, you know, bountiful, it's bountiful, you know. But those who have a mindset of penalizing and punishing, is different than those who would give bounty like Allah in this attribute. And so the Holy Quran says this, and as I land this plane, in the Beneficent Surah 55, everyone on it passes. And 20, verse 27 says, and they endorse forever the person of thy Lord, the Lord of glory and honor. And then it says, which then of the bounties of your Lord will you deny? Right. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, again, quoting him, says, it wouldn't seem to me that Allah would be jealous, but the deeper I study those words, it meant to me that he knows that he is the only creator and he knows that every good that we have came from, that came from him, no matter who it came through, it is not proper that we give his glory, his praise, his honor to others who are only agents or conduits of God's goodness, his greatness, his wisdom, his mercy, his power, his beneficence. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. And these attributes to me, we put them in action. We never, where we find the opposite of them, we should be found imposing mm. the mind, the will, the spirit of Almighty God, Allah. And that's how I believe that the minister, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, and Master Father Muhammad's coming as our savior and al Mahdi has imposed his will on this world and he's interfering with, the world, with this world's will and he's imposing his will to be done. All praises due to Allah. Allah. Very, very, very beautiful. Praises be to Allah. Very beautiful, very thorough and absolutely practical. So when we're looking at Beautiful points, because when you're looking at the word ghafr, it means, like you're saying, it means one who protects. You're seeking forgiveness for Allah's protection. So when you seek his protect, His forgiveness, you're literally asking to him protect you from having to go out and do that again. Right. right. Well, you, you think about our prayer, yeah. you know, you know, oh Allah, you know, we, we asking him, for instance, suffice to me what is lawful to keep me away from what is prohibited, you know? Right. Uh, we think about, you know, uh, our prayer that we say in, in the morning, you know, none, none but him is the one that can keep us from doing those things that are uh, displeasing to him, you yeah. know? So that, that, that's, that's along that line, brother. No, excellent, excellent. And also when we're looking at Vu Jalani in, in, inside of Surah 27, the word Vu, it means to own. Mm -hmm. It means owner. It means possessor. 
right? So when you look at how it's coming out of the points you were making, that endures forever, the, uh, ever the person of your Lord, that is robbed there. Mm -hmm. Then it says Lord again, but that word, it's more like a landlord, right. one who owns something, right? So he's the owner of glory and honor. So with that being said, then how can we be possessors of such wonderful attributes that you just spoke of? How can we possess those attributes and carry those attributes out? Well, we have to go back to day one, brother, minister, minister, what you raised on day one. And when we talk about Bismillah, when you broke down Bismillah, to go in Allah's name with Allah. In other words, what we had the discussion where we were going back and forth when we were talking about how we go from Bismillah to Alhamdulillah. But all of that is, is that when you go in his name, it's almost, it's almost as if you were saying, okay, I'm representing you. I'm your ambassador. I'm your Khalifa. I'm the one who is your successor by your permission. You mm -hmm. put me in charge of your creation, of your creation. So now uh, I have to go in your name. Otherwise, I have no power. Yes. Right. So it, so when you talk about that landlord, that owner, he owns me. When we line our mind up, as the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said to Mr. Farr, he said, I want your mind. I want your mind lined up with my mind, right? <laughs> and and when when the, the dean of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad's ministry class said, said, bro, how do you know that that man that you met was uh, was God? And he said, he said, because he made me all up into himself, right? Mm -hmm. So Lucius B.R., so may Allah be pleased with him. So so when we look at the mind of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, everywhere he said, he said, uh, uh, Allah, what Allah said to me, what the Savior taught me, that's all he said. And, and on how to eat to live is from God in person. It's not from Elijah Muhammad. It's from God in person, Master Father Muhammad. So everything that the minister has done, he has been a faithful witness, a faithful warner, and he has repeated again and again and again with no, really no slight variations of what the Honorable Elijah Muhammad told him at the dinner table or said to him by letter or spoke to him in certain circumstances that it took him literally decades to understand exactly what his teacher was leading him to, which is to unmask and take on Satan himself. You know, and as you, you're talking and you and I love the way that you said the formula for us. You gave us the attribute and then you gave us the other side of that attribute to give us the actions in order to be able to combat that or to overcome those obstacles. And I'm as I'm listening to you, we know you talked about this yesterday, Abdul Halim, and how the minister gave your name, gave you your name based on your works and your personality and your character. And it makes me think of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad when the mess, when the master told him he had to take plenty. Right. And he had to go in the line of the master and the minister had to go into the line of um, the messenger to take plenty. Can you um, give some examples how um, you have taken plenty, but you have used in the and cultivated the attribute of having. Well, I'll tell you, it's a kind of a joke. The minister and I were on the phone. I said, but minister, you know what I, I figured out? I said, you, you said when you gave me, you gave me the name Abdul Halim, you said it's because I've, I've been with you a long time and I've been through a lot. I said, you know, you gave me that name because if I'm going to be around a longer time, I'm going to have to go through even more. <laughs> and he busts <laughs> out laughing, you know. So so the point of the matter is, is that, is that you know, when you think about that, I, I've served on this post for 37 years. I've been the, the, the regional minister since 1994 mm -hmm. uh, in the region that Brother Carl, uh, Brother Carl Muhammad started here in the Southwest region. And of course, yes, I've been through a lot. I've been a lot personally. I've been through a lot in, in terms of ministry and learning, you know. And, and, and he, he said to me at one time, he said, brother, he said, you could have been anything. He said, but you're with me. And that doesn't mean that I lost anything. It just simply that in in the world I could have I've could have been a leader in leadership or politics or anything in this world, but I'm with him. So there's certain things that you you sacrifice, but that sacrifice is always rewarded in the end. Allah mm -hmm. does not waste the, the the work of any believer. Right. So I don't regret it at all because when I go amongst my peers, when I go back to homecoming. And the people that graduated college with me, they turned out to be high in the military, high in government, high in businesses, that and the other, in sports and other things like that. 
But when they see me, they know that I'm walking with the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. Right. It's like they like, yeah, uh, how the minister doing? You know, <laughs> I don't care how high they are. They, they, they and I feel it's a vind a certain kind of vindic vindication that maybe I don't have the material things that they have. Mm. But the truth of the matter is, is that I have what they're going to need, meaning right. pointing to that man, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. And and we have these back and forth conversations and they all bear witness that the minister is not lying to them. If you think about it, Sister Dia, yourself as an, an attorney and why I laid it out like that and why you recognize it is because you as a defense attorney have to know what the prosecution's uh, evidence is and what mm -hmm. angle, what, what theory they're going to use to try to uh, put your client you know, behind bars or, 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 or win uh, the, the particular lawsuit. So this is this is uh, the, the way we're, we're really Minister Farrakhan is a prosecutor and we're assistant prosecutors. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he, he is the chief prosecutor of, of the enemy of God. Uh, at, at he's God's mouthpiece in our midst. And we are the assistant prosecutors. We're the ones that are helping him uh, to prosecute them. That's right. That's right. Very beautiful. Very beautiful. And when he uh, absolves us, right? We yeah, no oh, I mean, I mean, look, he, he said he said on, on several occasions, I know that one at one labor's meeting, he said, does he said I could have got rid of all of you mm. and everybody put their head down because he could have. But when you have a man like that and he knows that he had to arrest the nation at a certain point in time and we sat down and, and this is what this this book comes from, a series of lectures that he gave. Right. The restrict law of Islam is our success. A series of lectures that he gave and then he introduced us to form four. And he said so much that he wanted a record of our sins or our wrongdoings, but he said our misunderstanding. Because right. in truth, if we really understood, as with this discussion is on a very high vibratory level. Like I said yesterday, I'm high. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm like high. My 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 leg is is, is I'm <laughs> I'm tapping my toe underneath the thing because I'm on very high level right now. Just thinking about what we're talking about it's a very high level of energy, right? And so when you think about it, he said. He said it was a misunderstanding mm -hmm. because if we really understood what the heck we were doing at the time, being that we had time to mature, we won't throw, he didn't throw us away. We wouldn't have done it. That's so right. we thank Allah for, for the mercy and him uh, 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 reflecting the attribute of Allah Halim himself. Praise be to Allah. So we want to thank you, Brother Minister, for uh, coming and being with us again today uh, and sharing those wonderful attributes uh, with us. And then as Sister Sadia said, how you laid it out uh, for us to understand. So brothers and sisters, you know, it, again, it's about living the book, the attributes in action. So how do we take those four attributes, as you heard today, and apply them in our life? So we want to hold up again the uh, Ramadan journal. Uh, we want to hold these journals up, um, brothers and sisters. And we want you to go to researchminister.com, that researchminister.com, and we want you to take the attributes and just ask yourself the question, how can you apply these attributes? Or are you applying these attributes uh, every day? And that's what's most important as we evolve, as we grow, as we strive to be better Muslims every day, every year in this beautiful month of Ramadan. But we clearly understand that after this month of Ramadan, we want to continue to strive to cultivate, to elevate uh, ourselves. Praise be to Allah. So these are our announcements, commercials for today. So join us tomorrow for day what? What, what day are we on? Episode, episode three. Yeah, episode three. Episode three. And the reason why we say episode and day is because we don't want to confuse anybody. You know, because actually Ramadan started... It starts at night. It goes from night and we wake up and we fast during the day. So day one literally started last night after Maghrib prayer. Then when we woke up, you're still in day one. Right. So I know you saw on the fly. It might have said day two. I mean, it ain't day two. It's day one. No, actually, in a few hours, it'll be day two. Right. <laughs> so I hope that's clear why we're, so we're saying episode, because every, every time the show come on, it's an episode. Right. But note, it goes from night to day, back to night to day. And all that is very absolutely significant uh, when we're talking about our own cultivation, our own um, development, coming in darkness, but now walking in light. That's right. 
So who are who are our special guests for tomorrow, brother Abdul? <laughs> I think Ansari. they're gonna have us tomorrow, right? <laughs> <laughs> Y'all all right with that? Y'all all right with me, sister dear? Come back tomorrow. Praise, Praise be to Allah. You already know, and this, and this, you're always gonna be tried, brothers and sisters, with difficulties. You know, but you have to be able to, as you would say. Be flexible. Be flexible. And, and you know, to... we're problem solvers. Absolutely. Right? We're gods. Right? Absolutely. We have power and force to overcome obstacles. And overcome, because you can get upset, you can be frustrated, or you can just make it happen. That's right. And we see Allah in all of it. Yes. So praise be praise to be Allah. Praise be to Allah. Or you can be Al Halim. Yeah. <laughs> <Patriot>. <laughs> 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 so we yeah. want you to log in tomorrow, same time, same place. You can. Uh, we're working on our uh, Facebook Live, so I, I think I know what the issue is. But you can get the replays on Facebook at Moss Forty Five, so that'll be up tonight for today. Yesterday's should be up as well. You can watch the replay also on YouTube at Ninety Nine The One, the most beautiful names. And we ask you to subscribe on YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram at Ninety Nine TMBN. And we would also like for you to donate so that we can continue propagating the faith and producing more original content with 99 The One. So all you have to do right now, if you get your phone and just open up your camera and then there will be a link, you click on it and then whatever your heart desires. And, um, and remember that 99 The One is a nonprofit organization. So it not only is it a tax write off, um, but, you know, you get credit with Allah because you are helping to propagate the faith. So praise be to Allah. And we might throw, if you give a donation of 10 or more, we may throw a gift. Absolutely. We're, we're going to, not may, we're going to throw a gift. Inshallah, we'll say it like that. We'll throw a gift in there with that uh, donation. So praise be to Allah. All right. And then, again, order your Ramadan 2024 Quranic Reading Journal and Historical Digest and visit shop.researchminister.com to purchase. And I encourage you, we're on uh, episode two, day one. However, we want you to just continue to write out, just like um, Brother Abdul Halim, he gave us a formula. You look at the attributes and what's really the opposite of those attributes, and then that's how you know what that action is. So encourage yourself to continue to write. Yes, and going deep in it, because it, yeah. it's, it's going so deep. Why, why is it important to go watch these next two hadiths and tweets by the Honorable Minister Louis Farcon on why we're really stressing this self-improvement, the basis for community development. I mean, Our yeah. beloved Prophet Muhammad, he says, peace be upon him. He's reported to have said again, cultivate within yourselves the attributes of Allah. The Honorable Mr. Louis Farcon tells us that if you run down all of the attributes, characteristics of God, these are also the attributes of human beings who are crafted by the creator. Amen. Amen. And so in the Holy Quran says, tells us, say, call on Allah or call on the beneficent. By whatever name you call on him, he has the best of names. Mm -hmm. Always win with that. Always win with that. And we want to say, when we quoted that, we want you to also go and read page 26 of Our Savior Has Arrived. Right. Right. And you and you will see the definitely the importance of why we keep stressing and keep stressing and keep stressing. Well, brothers and sisters, that's our time. Praise be to Allah. So we say to you all once again, Assalamu alaikum and Ramadan, Ramadan Mubarak. Mubarak. <laughs> that's right. Bismillah. He is the benevolent, the giving and merciful. He is so indescribable. His love is irreversible. Word undeniable, lyrically untriable, ultimately viable, eternally suppliable. Maybe inconceivable, but beautifully believable. The true reality, there's no similarity. Gave us more than charity, peace and prosperity. Why did we never care to see it? We could keep its clarity. The Almighty, the Father, metaphorically, but in the history, they tried to make his word a mystery. Gave immortality, anthropomorphic battle. 
jealousy Say he's got a seed, they can never bring the proof to me And honestly, the greatest, the best beyond time and space Beyond matter and flesh, yes, he's uncomparable Yet his parables, infinitely listed pictures Couldn't give a good description, the pictures missing But he created all the living in every dimension And he inspired what I'm giving, the giver of wisdom Devoid of any needs, anything that he wants All he has to say is be, cause he's the untouchable Infinitely trustable, his plan unstoppable Power untoppable, the reliable, undeniable Greater than the physical, master of the mystical The master of the worlds, the fashioner of sin